As Missouri continues its quest to try to become a right-to-work state, we can look at other states in the Midwest that have successfully become right-to-work states. Now, personally, uh, being from Chicago and Illinois, I'm pretty tired of union thug tactics, and I'm sure everybody can understand. But we need to look at not just governors like Mitch Daniels, who was able to put this forth, but state legislatures that were able to craft this policy and put it into action. And this next individual is referred to as Mr. Right to Work. Ladies and gentlemen, Carlin Yoder from Indiana. Thank you. It's a great honor to be here from the great state of Indiana. So who's your welcome to all of you here at CPAC? I have a simple message from Hoosiers that I'd like to share with you today. And that message is this. It's time for conservatives across the U.S. and in D.C. to stop playing defense and start getting offensive. Let's get on the offense. That's what we've done in Indiana over the last three or four years, and the results have been remarkable. We start out by taking a look at education, where we realized that well over half our budget was going to fund education, and the results were less than desirable. So we started passing legislation to hold the educational world uh, accountable. We started by demanding that teachers be evaluated on an annual basis. Then. We took those evaluations and we used them to decide who gets pay raises. So, no longer in Indiana will a teacher get a pay raise simply for having a pulse every year. <laughs> then, we decided, you know what, if it's good enough to give our kids grades in an A through F scale, why not do the same for our schools? So that's what we did. We passed a grading scale for our schools. Now. Parents know what kind of school they're sending their kids to. Of course, we were met with steady and loud opposition from the teachers' unions. They showed up in droves to the State House, and their simple message to us was, it's not fair what you're doing to us. In fact, not only is it not fair, you're blaming the wrong people. You should be blaming the parents. They said that parents are not involved in their kids' education, and so it's impossible to educate the kids. We said, okay, that's fine, and we turned around and we passed the largest voucher program this country has ever seen. What better way to get your parents involved in their kids' lives by allowing them to have the choice where they send their kids? But guess what? The teachers' union fought us on that one, too. Then. We took another step and we looked at our economy and we said, you know what? No state since Oklahoma in 2002 has passed right to work. It's our turn. And we went after it. Now, the Democrats in Indiana have a philosophy, and their philosophy apparently is to turn and run whenever the going gets tough. And that's exactly what they did. They turned and they ran. They ran all the way to Illinois, where they hold up. Yeah, why would you go to Illinois right now, huh? They ran to Illinois and they hold up in a hotel room for over 30 days to shut down the process in Indiana. But after a while, they got shamed into coming back and doing their job like they're supposed to do. And the next year, we passed right to work. I happened to be the author of that bill in the Senate, and my reward for that was to have all kinds of union protesters parading around the front yard of my house at home. And they carried uh, silly signs that said things like, the right to work means the right to work for less. Well, okay. So I went out and I engaged them in conversation one day, and the only thing that they wanted to complain about was the fact that their union bosses were paying them minimum wage to come protest in my front yard about a bill they said would make them work for less. Now, I don't know about you, but I think minimum wage is about as low as it gets. We went ahead and we passed that because we stayed on the offensive in Indiana. We didn't back down, and the day we passed that, in the State House in Indiana, there were probably anywhere from eight to 10,000 union protesters screaming at us, telling us how evil that we were. In fact, I was uh, interrupted, I think, three or four times as I gave the closing speech on the floor of the Senate. But in the end, 28 courageous senators stood up and voted yes to move Indiana forward and make them the 23rd right to work state. We didn't stop there. 
we went on to our economy to view where our taxes were, and we said it's time to get rid of the Indiana death tax. And so last year, we eliminated that tax. We also, we also put a cap on property taxes so that those taxes would no longer spiral out of control in Indiana. And we went after other things like the corporate income tax, and we cut that back drastically as well. So today, in Indiana, we have kids who are getting educated, and they're walking out of schools with a diploma that actually means something, Failing schools are now being held accountable, and teachers that are good are getting nice pay raises, and teachers that are bad are getting a pink slip. And the best part of this is Hoosiers are going home with more money in their pockets because they're paying less money to the Indiana government, and I think that's great. The moral of the story from Indiana is this. It's time for conservatives to stand up for what they believe in. Now, it's not enough just to say we're going to move forward. We must have a blueprint. Indiana, under the leadership of Mitch Daniels, had a blueprint and a long-term vision for where we wanted our state to go, and we went after it. And we didn't back down in the face of very loud, obnoxious opposition. My message to D.C. is follow the same blueprint. Stop just fighting Obamacare and fighting everything else that we don't like Instead, come up with our own ideas. Come up with our own way to mold the U.S. back into the conservative nation that we were founded on. We can't just keep fighting without a plan. It's time to stop backpedaling. It's time to quit playing defense and go on the offense. We can only do that with a vision and with a blueprint that we can follow. Thank you all for being here. God bless you, and God bless America.